let us transition now to our next guest. He's a man who knows a thing or two about fighting at light heavyweight. His next fight is at middleweight, though. It's UFC on Fox number 14 in Sweden in just a couple weeks. He's the legend himself, Dan Henderson. Dan, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Wow. There's, it sounds like there's a pep in your step. You're very excited on this Monday morning. Well. Just to talk um, to me. I don't, know, I don't know why I'm excited because I'm about to get my, my <laughs> face punched to practice. So oh. I shouldn't be that excited. Well, I appreciate you taking out some time. I know you have a hard out, so we'll, we'll get right to it. Um, you were very interested in that fight on Saturday. You were tweeting about it, but you stopped at 2-2. I never got your final take on the fight. In your opinion, did the right man win? Yeah, I mean, yeah, absolutely. Jones won that last round. I kind of had DC winning uh, rounds two and three. Rounds one, two, and three were really close, though, and, and I thought Jones won round four and five. So, I mean, DC just kind of ran out of gas. Mm. <clears throat> Were you surprised you know, Daniel had so much trouble taking him down? Yeah, actually, that was probably the biggest surprise of it is, you know, he just, he didn't really attempt too many. And the ones that he did, it, you know, I don't know. It seems like he got him to clinch a couple times and just kind of pushed off and backed out instead of keeping him there and, and uh, you know, working on that takedown and and uh you know he i don't know he just i think part of that was uh he ran out of gas at the end of the end of the fight but he should have been taking him down earlier i thought but you know jones is long and and uh you know has some good balance so i'm, I'm sure it wasn't easy to take him down did that performance give you a newfound respect for john jones uh, well, I've always respected him as a fighter. You know, I just, uh, I think that he's, he's got great skills, you know, in every part of the game. Um, you know, so I haven't, you know, I, I, I thought DC's wrestling would, would make a difference in that fight and he didn't really utilize it the way he, he's capable of. And, and, uh, you know, Jones did a great job defending it and putting dc on his back a couple times you were a part of the conversation a little bit leading up to this fight john calling you a 50 year old and all this stuff were you bothered by anything he said about you no i mean i i just think it it he he is who he is and and it it doesn't reflect good upon him when he when he does things like that and and it doesn't bother me at all i know who i am and i i know how I portray, portray myself and, and, uh, you know, I, I don't have a whole lot of respect for him as a person, uh, but why not? Yeah. He, he just, he's not, I, I said it to a couple of years ago. Yep. He's just not very genuine. He, he portrays himself differently than what he really is. And, and I think that's where people have the problem with him. If, if he didn't act like he was something he wasn't, I don't think anybody would have a problem with who he is. Very well said. I do recall on this show, like two years ago, you were one of the first people to say that. Now a lot, a lot more people do say that these days as well. Um, so let's transition to you. Like I said, in a couple of weeks, you're fighting in Sweden. You're fighting at middleweight against Gegard Mousasi. Why did you decide to go down to 185? Uh, you know, I had actually told Dana White, you know, when he, when he, after my Shogun fight, that I wanted to go down to 185. And, and, uh, you know, that's when he offered me the DC fight. And yeah, I was quite a bit smaller than DC and, and you know, the, the winner was gonna get that title shot, so yeah, you know, that's what uh it was a good opportunity for me and I just said okay and, and uh knowing that I was gonna end up down at one eighty five, I'm sure, I just uh you know, just feeling a little bit undersized at, at 205 and and you know i weighed in at 199 for my fight against dc mm. drinking water and and, and eat, not missing a meal so do you have to change a lot in your diet or training to get down to 185 uh just eat a, eat a little bit leaner and cleaner I, I generally try to eat uh pretty good during training camps um but I've really uh, focused on my diet this camp, and, and uh, I'm eating all I want, but it's it's all really healthy, clean food. I've got a 
a local restaurant that does the 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 meals, the delivery meals at home. It's called Eat at Home, and and they're extremely good and extremely healthy. And and uh, my energy level is, is, you know, I don't feel run down this camp. Almost every camp I've had. I'm always worn out about this time during the camp and, and I feel really good. And, and, uh, you know, everything's coming together really nicely right now. What was your reaction when you got the word that Musasi would be your opponent and not just Musasi 30,000 seat arena, big deal, second biggest show potentially in UFC history. What did you like or not like about this? Uh, I was, I was ready to fight anybody that they asked and, and, uh, at either way class. So, you know, and, and to fight somebody like Masasi, he's been around a long time. He's well respected. He's done a lot of good things in the sport and, and, uh, he's a tough opponent. He's, you know, style wise, uh, he's, he's very well rounded and, and, uh, you know, it's going to make a tough fight for me, but, you know, I, I obviously, uh, am confident going into this fight that, that I could beat him. And, you know, I, I was uh, excited. Not so sure about Sweden in January, but Sweden's <laughs> a great place and, and uh, you know, very nice country to visit. I've been there a few times in the past. Your fight is going to happen at around 3 a.m. local time. Any reservations about that? Uh, you know, I, I think that's when, you know, when I fight down in Brazil, that's about when they are sometimes or, you know, when I fought Shogun down there, it was two or three in the morning. So it, the time doesn't really matter to me. I, you know, I'll, I'll adjust it accordingly the last week or two and uh, to where I'm ready to go that late. After or, after the fight against DC in May, any thought at all of, of leaving the sport? No. No, I, I you know, I was, I was upset at my performance, obviously. I, I felt that... Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm capable of, of doing better than that. DC just, you know, fought exactly how I would have fought me if I was him. And, and he, he was able to, uh, to do his, his game plan perfectly. And I didn't stop it. And finally, do you feel like this is do or die? Do you, do you, they're all big, but do you feel like you have to win this fight? Uh, you know, I never put that kind of pressure on myself and, and knowing that no matter what, win or lose, I'm I'm not going anywhere. I I don't I don't think that. I mean, I don't ever think I'm gonna lose either. So you know, I'm I'm perfectly capable of uh winning this fight and, and know what I need to do to get it done and, and uh training is right on track to, to to make that possible. All right. Looking forward to it. I'll let you go. I know you have uh, some training now. Are we sparring today? What are we doing? Just some insight into what your day is like. Uh, yeah, we're sparring. So, oh. yeah, I'm getting punched in the face today. Nice. Who's the opponent? Uh, you know, Soka Jew is always here. Smiling Sam is here. And, and uh, uh, Nick Catone just came in to train for a week or so. And, and uh, you know, Luke Rockhold's coming, I think, tomorrow. Oh, wow. So, um, yeah, the last week and a half, two weeks of training will be a pretty tough push. Love it. Uh, take care, Dan. All the best to you in the fight. Very much looking forward to this one. Dan Henderson versus Gegard Musasi in Sweden. I'll see you out there. All the best. All right, Ariel. Thank you. Okay, there he is, the one and only Dan Henderson. Big fight for him January 24th in Stockholm, Sweden. Main card will take place at around, if my math is correct, at around 2 a.m. local time. Is that something like that? Um, I think they're six hours ahead, so eight eight p.m. in the United States, and it's 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 a big it's a big show for the UFC, the Tele Two Arena in Stockholm. It is being configured for around thirty thousand people, and from what I understand, ticket sales going very well. Also on that card, of course, Anthony Johnson versus Alexander Gustafson and uh, Ryan Bader versus Phil Davis. So interesting times for the light heavyweight division here in the month of January.